The discussion about the diffusion of digital innovations usually takes place under the catchphrase digital divide. This is because while the innovation diffuses through social networks, you have a divide between those who are already connected, who have already adapted the digital innovation, and those that have not yet adapted. So while this innovation diffuses through social networks, it's like you take a snapshot and then you have a divide inevitably. So a divide is inevitable because no innovation falls like manna from heaven and then uniformly is equally distributed among everybody in society. No, it's a diffusion process through social network. And for that, it's inevitably that a divide has to happen at a certain point in time while the diffusion process is going on. So here I created a schematic network with a diffusion process and we have to ask several questions if we want to define this dynamic here. And these lead to different perspectives on the digital divide and therefore different definitions of the digital divide. First of all, we have to ask what kind of technology are we talking about? So kind of like what do these colored nodes have to have in order for me to color them? Do they have phones, internet, broadband, some kind of storage technology? Or, or what are we talking about here? Second, then we have to ask, well, what are these nodes? Are these countries, organizations, or individuals? So we have to choose that. Third, we can ask, what kind of characteristics matter? So do these nodes have certain characteristics? And do these characteristics have something to do with the diffusion? process. So for example, here the, the upper nodes, the colored nodes, seem to have regularly the characteristics of the attributes of having a triangle and a circle. There are also other ones in the non-connected, they have that, but on general, let's say, most of the ones who have access already, who are already connected, also have these attributes. So maybe they have something to do with the diffusion process. That's an interesting question to ask. And finally, we ask, well, how are they connected? That's definitely we ask, like, what is, the, what is the technology? Is it broadband? And the second one, the other question is, how intense is the usage? Is it enough that people simply have broadband? Or do they have to use it? Do they have to use it extensively? Or does the usage already need to have some kind of effective impact? And only then we say, well, now they really adopted the technologies. So you can define the digital divide through four different perspectives. You ask who with which kind of attributes connects how to what. You can also look at these four perspectives through our cube framework. For example, here first you have access to the technology. So you ask what kind of technology are we talking about in, in our specific study. Then you ask about the usage characteristics, which kind of characteristics do these users have, let's say the human component of usage. Then you ask, well, who are we actually talking about? You're talking here about individuals or about hospitals or about businesses. And then you ask how, what is the intensity of connectivity? Are we talking about here simply having access or are we talking about usage or, or real impact? And then of course, you do different policies, that's always the third dimension, to foster the adoption of digital technologies and to narrow the digital divide. So let's go through these four perspectives one by one. Let's start with the question of what technology we are talking about. Digital information communication technologies are the convergence between three previously separate technological trajectories, communication, storage, and computation. And in principle, we would have to consider every standalone computing capacity or every standalone storage device. But that is traditionally not what happens. When people talk about the digital divide, they usually focus only on communication, on telecommunication. That is also justified theoretically because what we are observing over the recent decades is that an ever increasing share of our storage and computation capacity is happening in the cloud. So you can imagine it's kind of like centralized in some big server form and we are just all accessing it. So for example, you have a song that is sent, this is stored centrally by a, a music provider and you just stream it 
whenever you want to listen to the song. That means you do not need storage capacity anymore on your device, or at least not as much. And you can listen to the song whenever you want to. However, you still need bandwidth. You need telecommunication access to the centralized storage or computational facility. And that means that bandwidth telecommunication becomes kind of like the portal to access this digital realm. And then how much storage you have and how much computational power you have, it becomes a tricky question because if I don't have enough computational power here, I can still access one of these cloud services and let them compute. So actually I need less, this less and less important. Uh, but what is indispensable is that you've telecommunicated access bandwidth in order to access the, the digital cloud of services.